Hello and welcome back to my shop. My name is George and I'm coming to you from Chelsea, Quebec. It's time to replace the mobile base on my bandsaw. The problem with it is that it's awkward to use and it's a bad design. This is the design that I'll be using. Uh, in principle, it's a copy of Matthias Wandel's um, design at woodgears.ca. Uh, it's identical in the sense that the, the machine, or whatever the appliance is, rests on its own feet most of the time. You can see that the wheels are just dangling over here. When it's time to move the bench, you crank it up onto the wheels uh, and move it wherever you want to. Um, it's different from Matthias's design a little bit in that the two sides are not linked. So if you want to hoist uh, the bench, you have to pull this crank and then get to the other side and pull the other crank uh, as well. Um, so that's a bit of a con. On the plus side of things, this is an easier build and you can knock it off in an afternoon. The only measurement that you need to keep track of in uh, laying out uh, the base is the distance separating the mounting holes. I'm going to mount the base on the legs and uh, I'm going to aim for a flat portion about here and when I measure across 12 and a half inches works out to be uh, a good distance to separate the mounting points. Here are the pieces needed for the mobile base. They're all from 3 quarter inch construction grade plywood. There are six panels measuring 17 by 7 inches two cranks 24 inches in length, one and a half inches wide, and the two short links, also one and a half inches wide, five inches long. At this stage they have been rough sanded using 60 grit paper. One quarter of a sheet of plywood was enough for all the pieces. I'll start the layout with the, with the left hand uh, mounting hole. Uh, I'll set it uh, an inch in from the edge and an inch down from the top. The mounting hole on the right is going to be 12 and a half inches from the left hand one or 13 and a half inches from the edge. So I'll set it along this line someplace, but we're going to we're going to set the height a little bit later. Now you can see that there's uh, another three and a half inches to go for the 17 inch width. Why I've put extra on this side, I'm going to explain by cutting in for a second or two. Here's why we're going to add three inches to uh, the uphill side uh, of the uh, of the base. Keep your eye on this caster as I crank the bench onto the wheels. Uh, you see how it's moved closer to the center. Um, it's fine if you're moving the bench in this direction, but could, things could get a little tippy when you want to push it this way. So by adding a few inches to this side, we'll make sure that when the, when the bench is hoisted onto the wheels, the wheel is going to be uh, sitting close to the edge. Okay, now we're ready to put in the 10 degree slope. Now over a distance of 17 inches, uh, a 10 degree slope is going to lose 3 inches by the time it gets to the other side. So I'll start it a couple of inches down from the top. And by the time we get to the other side, we've got the 2 inches starting point, 3 inches drop. Well that puts us 2 inches up from the bottom. So off camera, I'll grab a sharpie and draw in the slope. So now it's time to mark the board for the pivot points. The pivot points for the uh, crank arm and for the link at the other end. And to do that, I made this little triangle. It's three inches to a side. And uh, I drew a line through the center of the triangle parallel to one of the sides. So I'll just call that uh, the base. And I'm going to take the triangle's central line, line it up with the slope, and uh, run it over until the apex meets the line 
where I want to put the mounting hole. And so we're going to mark the apex and the uphill point for pivot bolts. Of course, the apex one is going to do double duty because it's also a mounting bolt. And uh, I'm also going to be drilling here. There won't be a bolt, but I need to drill. You'll see why later. Uh, so this is where the crank arm is going to be located. Now we want the link down here. Um, placed uh, someplace where it's going to uh, stay out of trouble. And uh, let's give it a couple of inches from the edge just to make sure that there's some meat in the middle panel. Much of this is going to get cut away. So parallel to the slope. And again, we're going to mark it for all three points. But pivot bolts are only going to, do, going to go in at these two points. Three of the panels are going to be used to make the base on the mobile base on one side of the machine. The other three panels are going to be used on the other side, so you'll want to lay out another board using exactly the same uh, procedure, but make it a mirror image. Now I want to uh, stack the boards three high and bind them together with some brads. I'm using uh, one inch long brads, 23 gauge. Um, so they're only going to penetrate about a quarter inch into the next board and they'll be fairly easy to pry apart. You'll want to keep them out of trouble naturally. So I've, uh, I'm going to position them uh, a couple of inches in from the ends and an inch down from, uh, from the top. And you'll want to do the same thing for the other stack. Here's what needs to happen at the drill press. The holes marked M are one quarter inch diameter through holes. They're the easy ones. The holes marked P, as in Peter, are going to have T-nuts installed. And so they require a few steps. Start with a through hole using the finest diameter bit that'll make it all the way through the three boards. Then on the bottom panel, bore a shallow relief for the flange of the T-nut, say a sixteenth of an inch deep and three quarters of an inch across. For the body of the T-nut, you're going to need a five sixteenth inch hole through the bottom panel only. If you can stop short of going through the bottom panel, that's even better. Last, you need a one quarter inch through hole made down from the top all the way through and into the opening of the 5 16 inch hole that's uh, at the bottom. That's it for the P holes. The holes marked D for dummy are needed to help mark the board for clearance cuts. They're not actually used for anything else, just for marking the board. Uh, they should be made a quarter inch in diameter, but just deep enough into the top board only to hold a dowel upright. The holes marked S are for the alignment skewers. They'll be useful when the boards are glued. They're just bamboo barbecue skewers, 5 seconds inch in diameter. Uh, I forgot a couple more are needed above the slope. Um, look for them a little bit later in the video. They're going to be a little bit to the right of the M holes.